actually here to talk about Lua, and who's here to just read their screens, because I can see a, a couple of people here. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it just seems like I'm standing in front of a, 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 in front of a room full of people looking at laptops. But maybe that's just temporary. Alright. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Simona. Alright. Oh, yeah. show of hands for people who had programmed in any programming language at all before and who would like to know how to do that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there's one, Sam Reed, yes. No. Well known uh, uh, technical yes. doofus, isn't that right? It doesn't really know anything. I didn't. Okay. Just a slash release really manager of MediaWiki. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what we can do over the last time. Yeah. We'll just start. Um if at any point during this uh, talk you have a problem or a question, please feel free to raise your hand. And we have a couple of Lua experts sitting right up here who will come and help you. Yep, so I have some slides here for people who, uh, who don't know how to program at all, but uh, it sounds like they won't really be needed, um, which is good. Uh, we'll be able to get things through things more quickly and cover more ground. Um, so yeah, I have a, we have a test server set up now. Um, that's screwbonto.wmflabs.org. Uh, I'd encourage everyone to go there to create an account and, uh, and to try creating a module. Um, uh, I've got there on the screen the, the boilerplate code that you, that you would use to create a module. Um, Alright, and uh, yeah, you can invoke it using hash invoke from, uh, from the, even the module talk page. Skip through a whole lot of those interesting things, and then uh, here we go. So, introduction to Lua. We'll, we'll start as any good reference manual should start with the lexical elements of Lua. That is to say, comments they start with with two hyphens, as in SQL, and uh, long comments are delimited with two hyphens, followed by two square brackets, WikiLink style. Um, line breaks are ignored, but recommended. You should not write your code all on one line. Uh, semicolons, are, you could use them to separate statements, but they're generally not needed. Um, Lua has about eight data types. Uh, it has nil, which is the equivalent of null in a lot of other languages, or undefined in JavaScript. It has a single number type, which is a floating point type. Uh, it has strings which are just uh, uh, just byte strings. They're eight bit clean um, and boolean, of course. It has uh, first class values uh, for uh, functions of first class values. Um, they return multiple values. Are fairly unusual for programming languages. They uh, the, the multiple return values you have to. They, they're not actually bundled into a data type. You can't assign some. Like a, a list to a, to a single variable, um, and yeah, you can have anonymous uh, functions just as in JavaScript and, uh, and several other languages using the syntax that you see there, uh, just by omitting the function name from the, the function declaration. Uh, Lua has uh, one structured data type called a table. Um, it's implemented as a hash table. It's similar to JavaScript's object in that you use it for object-oriented programming as well as data storage. 
um, but it's similar to PHP's array in that you use it for numerically indexed data as well as uh, string indexes. And uh, it, the keys can actually be any, uh, any Lua value. You can use functions as keys and you can use tables as keys. Um, you access it with, uh, with a syntax that's identical to JavaScript with a, a dot followed by the name or with square brackets followed by uh, with an expression in square brackets. Operators. Um, Operators, are, Louis uses a tilde equals for not equals instead of an exclamation mark. Um, but I figure every language has to have a, a few quirks in it just to keep you on your toes so that you don't think you're programming some other language. Uh, concatenation with, is with two dots. The length of a string or a table is, uh, is a hash. Uh, you put the hash before the variable. It gives you the length. Logical operators are spelled out and or not. You can take the power of a number to another number, that's exponentiation there with a carrot, similar to, to basic, I think. And, um, and all of those operators there at the bottom have their usual meanings that you would find in any other programming language. That's uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to equals, plus minus times divide, modulo. Those are the ones, no surprises there. Where you might get a slight surprise is the lack of assignment operators in Lua. Um, and uh, like plus equals, minus equals, they don't exist. It's, it's like in basic, you have to write a equals a plus one when you want to add one to a number. Even plain equals is not really an operator. You can't take the value of an assignment operation. Um, there's no bitwise operators in in Lua, which I suppose makes sense given that the Lua numbers are all floating point. Um, and there's no ternary question mark operator like in C and other languages derived from C. So, um, in the Lua, Lua assignments, you can assign multiple values in the one assignment statement by separating the values with commas. So there has to be, uh, so, you can do that by using the same number of values on each side of the equals sign. Um, if a function returns multiple values, it's, it, it's assigned to each, uh, each variable on the left-hand side of the equals sign in turn. Um, you can also declare local variables at the same time as you're doing an assignment by uh, prefixing that with the local keyword. Um, don't try to assign your local variables as if you were programming C and putting a comma in the middle of the, uh, the expression. That will be a syntax error. Control structures should not be a big surprise to anyone who's programmed in a few other languages. Um, you could, the um, construct... Sorry. Lost all now. That was the mouse wheel. Um, control structures, here they are. Um, all of the control, control structures in Lua end with, with the keyword end, except for uh, the post condition loop, which ends with until and a condition. Um, so you don't have to remember whether it's. it's uh, you know, in, in shell script, you, you start with if and end with fi for no apparent reason. They just spell the, the keyword backwards. None of that nonsense in Lua. Everything just ends with end. Um, if uh, uses the, the keywords else if. Uh, you, you put then at the end of the, the line like you do in, in, in basic. Numeric four. So to count one, two, three, four, you just uh, start, you give it the, the start integer and the stop integer uh, and an equals sign to, to let it know what you're trying to do that. And a generic four to iterate through a, a data structure like a table uh, is, is for, for the key uh, and value in the iterator to a menu. So the index variables, uh, the i's in these two examples are local to the loop. They're not, uh, they don't exist after the loop finishes.
Um, variables in Lua have lexical scoping, uh, pretty much the same as JavaScript, so anyone who's used JavaScript uh, more than a little should be familiar with that. So when you have a, a function inside another function, the, the function inside has access to the variables of the function that declared it. An unset variable in Lua is identical to a nil value. There's no way to tell the difference between nil and unset, um, unlike in PHP. So if you want to delete a variable in, in Lua, you just set it to nil. Um, and the corollary to that is that no error is raised if uh, you try to access an undefined variable. You just find that nil is inside it. Objects in Lua um, can be done using a variety of syntaxes. You just have to make a table and put functions inside it. Um, you, you, there's a number of ways to, to construct objects. Um, private member variables can easily be implemented using lexical scoping. You just make local variables which aren't accessible any other way through your, your accessor functions. Um, when you do a, a static method call of an object in Lua, it's with a dot, the same for property access of an object. Um, and there's a colon syntax for calling non-static methods, um, which causes a, an, ex, a, a, an implicit self-parameter to be passed as the first parameter to the function. Um, here's a typical example of, of one style of object-oriented declaration. Uh, you see we have a factory function which creates a new object. Um, it uh, has a local private variable called private. Uh, we create the object which is just an empty table. Uh, add, a, add a method to it using that, that uh, function declaration syntax. The method has, a, has a, an implicit self parameter which will be a reference to this, this uh, table that we've created here, but it's empty anyway, so we don't really need it. Uh, it returns the, uh, the private variable, which is accessible in the lexical scope, and then uh, here we return the object from the factory function. So that's one way to do objects in Lua. You can find lots of other ways to do objects in, Lua, in the programming in Lua uh, website, which is uh, lua.org slash pil, if, if memory serves. Each table in Lua can have an attached meta table, which gives you a, a kind of operator overloading feature. It lets you over, overload operators like concatenation, addition, subtraction, all of those. Um, but most usefully, the, the, it allows you to override um, table index access. Um, that can be used for object inheritance and uh, for prototype based object orientedness. So when you um, access a, a method or a property of an object that doesn't exist, uh, it will check the index meta, meta method which can then point to the parent object and then it can get its method from there. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk about the, the uh, interface between MediaWiki and Lua as it's currently implemented. Um, all Lua code is going to be inside the module namespace. There's not going to be any uh, inline expressions inside templates. You can only call these uh, functions which are defined elsewhere. In the module namespace, we'll have uh, a code editor provided, a JavaScript code editor. Um, it's uh, very nice to use. It, it does syntax highlighting and, and automatic indenting. Um, so yeah, definitely better than just a plain text box. This is uh, how you invoke um, a, a function in a module from, uh, from a template or a, a, a wiki page. You use the hash invoke parser function, which we've introduced, uh, give it the module name, the function name, and um, arguments which may be named or numbered, pretty much identical to templates. Uh, separate instances of hash invoke are, um, are isolated from each other. You can't define a global variable in one and then use it in another. Although, and so the performance implications that that might have are sometimes uh, are a bit reduced because the caches are, there's some caches that are shared between them. Uh, 
Um, okay. A, uh, a module in Lua is, is a, uh, a chunk of Lua code that returns an export table. Um, and that export table contains, uh, contains properties which, are, um, which refer to the functions that are exported. Uh, we re provide a require function, um, and um, which lets you pull in other modules. Uh, while you, so when you're in Lua code, you can get uh, access to another module using require without having to go back via the parser. And that's not actually isolated. With, it doesn't have isolated global variables, so you can define a global variable in one module, which, are, which is then used for another module. Um, that lets you. That lets you copy Lua code from the web uh, pretty much uh, unchanged and you can plug it into a module and it'll just work with require. Um, we provide a package library similar to the one in Lua 5.1, um, not quite the same. It doesn't provide uh, access to the local file system. Like the, the Return value from uh, from Lua functions is just a wiki text string, um, assumed to be already expanded by the, have templates expanded in it. Um, multiple, if it, if a function returns multiple values, they're just concatenated, concatenated together. And um, if you try to return a non-string value, it's just converted to a string using the usual uh, usual uh, conventions. In particular, you can return an object which has a two-string meta method, and that'll that'll be converted to string by calling that method. Um, the, a, uh, a function in uh, defined in a module gets a, a an argument called frame, and frame is an object which which has a number of uh, facilities. To, to get arguments and to handle them. Um, the simplest one is just the args table, which is a kind of pseudo table which has uh, the arguments, um, or all of the arguments in it. Um, so if you want to get access to, say, the name one argument, then you can do that with this syntax here, frame.args.name one. Because args is not a real table, it's, it's actually lazy initialized when you access indexes in it. Um, we've got an argument pairs method which gives you an iterator, allowing an iterate over all arguments passed into the function. And uh, we also provide get parent, uh, a, a method called get parent, which allows you to access the parent frame, which is all of the arguments to the template which called hash invoke. Since we imagine, um, at least uh, during migration, there'll be a whole lot of wrapper templates, which basically their only job is to um, it is to be called by articles, and then the, the template will call Lua. Um, so that makes that so that task a bit easier. It makes the uh, the um, parser overhead a bit a bit smaller. Uh, we provide access to the preprocessor in Lua, so that if you want to expand a template, uh, you can do so using that preprocess method. You can expand templates, you can call parser functions, you can do everything that you would normally do in the preprocessor. Um, and uh, we also offer structured template invocation, which lets you kind of kind of like constructing a template invocation, but without all of the problems that would go with that, like escaping pipe characters and, and braces and th things like that. Um, it allows you to just pass arguments in as a, uh, as a Lua table straight into a template. Um, note that arguments that you get from frame.args are already expanded, so if there were any templates in them, they'll, they'll already be expanded into plain text by the time Lua gets them. Um, so uh, it's important to uh, not construct preprocess input from those arguments. Don't call preprocess on uh, on the argument that it already is preprocessed. Otherwise, you'll uh, you'll double expand. Um, instead, just use a frame expand template, which which doesn't have the same problems. 
So um, that's pretty much the interface as it stands at the moment. We've got some future directions lined up. Um, there's a uh, Gabriel Vickers interface that, that he proposed on Wikitaker um, to get uh, uh, object placeholders for arguments instead of just getting string arguments. Um, and then those object placeholders could theoretically be used to, to find out more information about how where the arguments came from and uh, to get say get them as, as plain wiki text instead of expanding them first. Um, uh, they're provided at the moment, but they don't do anything special that you can't do with the other functions. Um, we're planning on introducing into wiki module invocation at some point, so you'll be able to have like a global repo repository of, uh, of um, Lua modules. Um, and maybe at some point we'll also introduce languages other than Lua. That's, that's yet to be decided, but there's still interest in, in introducing JavaScript, server-side JavaScript, or how exactly we do resource limiting in JavaScript is, is uh, not entirely worked out yet. Date and time functions, that's probably one of our highest priorities. We don't offer any date and time functions at the moment to Lua code, uh, and people do tend to want to use those. Um, and direct access to core parser functions and variables like you'd expect in a template, page name, hash if exist, all those sorts of things. Uh, Victor Vasilov is working on a, an interface for, for accessing those directly. That's it. Okay, and uh, that's, that's about it uh, from the, my notes. Uh, but there's the more information uh, in the Programming in Lua uh, book, which is online at that address up there. Um, my slides are also online. Um, I gave you the address at the start of this talk, but I can put that up again in, in a few minutes. I, uh, if it's not linked there, it'll be linked there soon. All right, so can we have questions? Yeah, well, um, well, exercises particularly, yes, there we go. Okay, so I can walk around. I have a mic in case you have questions for Tim about Lua, Scribunto, the future of templates. Okay, hold on. Hey Tim, we have a question about the pros and cons of Lua versus JavaScript. Do you want to talk about that? Yep. Um, yeah, I had the same question in the last session. That's quite a reasonable question. Um, Lua is designed to be an embedded language, embedded in other applications. Um, it's, uh, it's small and simple and uh, it allows you to limit memory requirements. It has an internal stack and it has stack depth limits. Um, it, it, you can easily implement it in a uh, memory and time limits. So that all, those sorts of resource limiting things were, were the reason we chose it over other languages. Um, and, and also the fact that it's easy to construct a sandbox in Lua. Um, you, can, it, you can actually construct a sandbox using pure Lua to sandbox other Lua code. Um, so that makes it all safe and secure. Uh, um, and. Um, it's a, being so small a language, there's much less chance for, uh, for things like buffer overflow vulnerabilities that you might find in, in larger frameworks like Python. Um, does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. I have a request for you to actually do that. Like show yourself doing that right now. What you, what's on the screen? Okay. I will certainly do that. So, here is scribunto.wlfart.org. I have created an account earlier. Go to a module. Might have to put the mic down.
So, I just created a module called Module Tim. Its function is to add an exclamation mark to any uh, parameter that's passed into it. And uh, so, and then I went to its module talk page. Um, I invoked it. I, uh, I passed in the parameter more Lua. And uh, sure enough, when we preview it, we get a more Lua with an exclamation mark. So, yeah, that's done. I hope that, that satisfies that little merge thing. I suppose my question. Tim, um, when we think about the current use cases of template programming, how do you imagine these types of modules will actually interact with, say, the citation template on English Wikipedia? Do you imagine that you'll have a hybrid template Lua combination where you have the invocations of the Lua code embedded within, say, the site web template? Or do you imagine that something like this type of invocation would be literally in a Wikipedia article, which of course would be pretty ugly and probably something we want to avoid. Um, yeah, I think uh, the way that it's done it will depend on, on the, the type of template. I think the citation templates will probably be mostly in pure Lua um, because uh, there's not so much formatting that goes into those, uh, whereas nav boxes might be more of a hybrid of, of Lua and uh, and uh, traditional template. Um, yeah, but it's, it's really up to the community and, and how they, they feel that it should be implemented. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of templates, you know, there, there are some templates where, where you know, template values lower very lightly. Yeah, I'd like to hear from anyone who's who's trying this out and, and uh, has any problems or questions that they would like to ask. Sorry about that. Do what? A couple of questions over here, so uh, we can have those in a second. Yeah, something I wanted to emphasize that what I found really cool when I just uh, realized it is that because you can use these hybrids, it will make the migration probably very easy because you can. Even if it would be, even if the citation template would be entirely in Lua, you can just make one call in the existing site template and everything will still work. So that's yeah. very nice to have. Yeah, we want to maintain complete compatibility with the article source, you know, that really makes things much easier. Yeah. Uh, Simona, can you bring the mic? Can I create some pages in module name? Can I create some pages in module namespace? Will that work? Yeah, you can. It, it won't do anything special. Uh, it won't really do anything special, but you can create some pages if you so desire. No, it's... Any other questions? In the idea of when we will have this live on uh, the foundation case? Um, yeah, we, we don't have an exact timetable yet. Um, it depends on how many features we decide we need before it's it's put in. You know, I've, I've shown to you here a fairly minimal set of features, and I think if we deployed it just with the features that we've got now, it could be done within a couple of months. Uh, we could have it live on the wiki. Okay, thank you. Um, I tried it out and um, I must say I don't love the debugging uh, facilities that are in place. It's, there is uh, just a red script error and if I hover over it then... Uh, uh, yeah, you should click on that script error. Yes, it gives me a back trace but that doesn't really help because uh, it refers to something in uh, MW Lua line 300. Yeah. Uh, I'll come and have a look at it.
drive for us for this time. So what was the issue? Just, um, just a little syntax error. that the function in the module you're trying to invoke wasn't actually a function, it was a string. And we'll just have to put in some more robust error checking in Scribble Tub later to make it a, a better error message when that happens. Are there any? Sorry. So we have some extra time. We have about 20 more minutes in this tutorial. If you have a template that you'd like to get converted over to Lua right now, this is a great opportunity. What did you say? Hold on a second. Okay. He's actually joking. What you do? Um, okay. How you can iterate over the unknown number of parameters using argument pairs? That's that's what that's for. So um, yeah, what the slide where that's that's on? Uh, just I saw that, but uh, you said you can pass uh, uh, unnamed, aka numbered parameters as well as named parameters. So if you will uh, uh, iterate through the pairs, it will have the, uh, the number of a parameter as a, as a name. That's right. Name is, will be the, uh, the number of the parameter. Okay. Have you tried rewriting English Wikipedia citation templates in Lua? Uh, not just yet, no we haven't. Uh, and we have some idea of how hard it will be to do that because someone already tried to rewrite them in uh, PHP and wrote about, um, about 1500 lines of code and gave up. So, um, so yeah, we, we expect it to be a pretty big job to rewrite those citation templates. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely essential and um, we hope that the community will help us with it, but if not, then we'll have to do it too. Because that's we expect that to be to provide a big performance benefit. Any other questions or suggestions of templates to convert? Sorry. I, th I was thinking it would be nice to see uh, some kind of uh, info box, maybe with uh, maybe which we could parameterize uh, uh, color or mes a message, something like this. So, um, did you have an info box template in mind that you, you'd want to go through? You know, maybe one of the standard ones like uh, conflict of interest, something which, which is quite popular. Yeah, I mean, some infobox templates are quite complex and some are less complex. Um, so yeah, maybe one of the, the user ones like language uh, level. I 
was just going to look at a template extension on here with your dialogs and stuff. It's right here in front of me. Um, yeah. yeah. I guess this is pretty typical. Yeah, so it is, it's possible to uh, to convert this over to Lua, um, but uh, probably pretty challenging with one hand on the keyboard and one hand on the mic. Uh, is that in hand too? No, no. All right. Uh, it's not. Um, yeah, but we can convert a small part of this. Tim, is there any tracking of uh, modules used, like uh, special uh, modelings here to a given module, so I can know which templates use which module? Yeah, modules are actually tracked via template links at the moment, the template links table. So when you use a module on a page, you actually get, um, yeah, there you go, you get the module listed as a template used in the, in the preview. So. Um, you know, I can save that, uh, then if I edit it, you see it's, it's sitting there, and, and that's because it's it's basically the same as a template. So yeah, that's how you track them, and I can go to, uh, to the module page, click one of the links here, and you know, it'll tell me that it'll list it as a transclusion. So, um, you know, using template links was convenient, and maybe we need to change a few interface messages to make it more clear that it can be a transclusion of a template or a module. Um, but yeah, certainly we have all the features that you would have with templates. Time for more questions? Hold on. Actually triggers the Lua parsing? Is it namespace? Um, the hash invoke parser function used to invoke the module is the thing that triggers Lua. Okay? Um, at some point in the future, we might even have different languages that can be in the module namespace um, with some as yet undetermined mechanism for determining what, what language uh, a given module is in. Um, Yep, Timo. So does that mean you can store a module in the user namespace? If the, if the hash is what it triggers? Yeah, syntactically you could, but no, you can't. It's not allowed. Okay. Yeah, it's not allowed. Today we scale up templates. There are really little uh, reutilization and factorization between wikis. Uh, I guess that uh, with uh, Lua, we'll have uh, wiki agnostic functions and uh, modules. Is it then to have a uh, repository for modules outside wikis? Yeah, um, we'd expect the feature is not done yet to have, um, to have like a global repository of modules. Um, Although particularly popular modules or important modules, we can distribute with the uh, the MediaWiki extension. Um, yeah, but at some point we would have to expect to have some sort of method for uh, for fetching remote modules from some other place. Um, uh, yeah, but at the moment you just have to copy and paste, I guess. So I'm over here. Thank you. Naming conventions, should we add .lua at the end of the module name, especially if you consider having uh, JavaScript modules as well? I don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if the JavaScript thing is going to happen at all or in the short term or what, but um, 
but uh, you know, maybe if it does happen, then that, that will be a useful convention. Um, but we can always rename modules at that point. Uh, that's, that's not a big deal. We can have a, a module that is just a proxy to another module. You, know, you can just type. Um, just type So does everyone see that, uh, what I just typed there in my text editor? You can just have a module which solely consists of a require of another module. Uh, and so if you wanted to rename a module, you can leave a, that as a, as a kind of redirect behind. And yeah, and, and you, can, you can have real redirects as well. Uh, you can just, that is allowed. Um, uh, and the handy thing about doing this is you can even override a few functions. So you can say, here's my uh, other module, and then you can override a function or two. Um, and then uh, return the, the uh, resulting value. Um, so that allows you to have like a backwards compatibility layer if you wanted to do that. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, there's lots of uh, migration features there that we have. Seems like there's no more questions. Nope, should we uh, wrap up? Okay. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, the slides are online. Uh, most of these notes are also in, linked off of the main Berlin Hackathon wiki page. Lunch in 15 minutes. Yes. Oh, and uh, just after lunch at 2 p.m. in uh, one of those rear rows or something, I'll tell you where, uh, the Wikidata team is giving like a short 15 minute presentation. Um, if you have a project that you want to give just like a five minute lightning talk about, then we can do that right after the Wikidata talks, but I figure not too many of you will want to do that. Okay.